their stone tools on top of these stones in order to get flatter edges to enable them to cut objects. And also they were using them as a blender. So they'll put their tomato onions on top of them and then they grind. Even currently, they still use it in our villages. They still have the same setup. We want you to have a feel of a cave. So the oldest kind of settlement was that of a cave and during that time they were not living in homes like we do now. And also during that period they brought the art of writing hieroglyphics which actually began with the Egyptians because civilization began in Egypt. So this is a crocodile chasing human beings. So the moment you get here, you immediately know that some people used to live here but because of wild animals they had to move to a different region for safety sake. The colors they were using were red, black, and white. They were killing animals using their blood against the rocks. They were also using stones to write on the rocks. And then they were getting dye from certain plants as well. That's how they were getting their colors. And also when we look over here, this is a silo. This is a storeroom or a storehouse in the northern part of Ghana. They keep their grains, their rice, and all of that. It makes their food to last longer. So it has a hole at the top. Two people usually go there. One person will use the ladder to climb and then get into the silo. We'll be removing the food outside. We'll be throwing it outside for the person standing outside to be catching. So that's how they use it. We'll see one in a different section shortly. And also this is an umbrella rock. This picture was taken in the northern part of Ghana. But when you visit eastern region closer to Boti Falls, you find one. And also when you visit Shy Hills, you find one also. Yes, it's very beautiful and it's natural. Now we come on to the beach section, okay? So we were already exposed to beets even before the Europeans arrived in the 15th century. So we started with the ones with the stones, especially our warriors, because those ones are so heavy. So they were using these ones. And also during the Trans-Saharan trade, they were using these ones for trading activities and purposes also. Now in Ghana, beets is used to check for the weight of babies. So when babies are born, we tie it around the wrists the waist of the female and also around the legs. So when they are growing, they are able to remove them and then replace them because they become tighter. Yes. So over here, we want all of us to know that we're already exposed or indigenous to beets even before the Europeans arrived on our land. All right. is the oldest mosque in Ghana and also one of the oldest in West Africa. It was built in 1421 and it's built with clay and then sticks. It also has four entrances, and it has one Quran which is being recited once in a year. Now when you visit the Savannah region in the north where this mosque is located through oral tradition, it's known as the Mecca of West Africa and it's built in the Sudanic architectural style. They should try and then visit whenever you visit the northern region. So we talk about our back cloth. In the olden days, we didn't have these fine fabrics to sew our clothes. So this is what we're rather using to sew our clothes. They start by harvesting the back of a tree and they get something like this. They soak it into water for a few days to soften it a bit and then they beat it with a wooden hammer. That's what the men are showing in the second picture. When they are done, they dry it and then they use the stones around it. The reason why they use the stones around it is to prevent or avoid it from folding. the Iron Age era because as time went on the people were getting more ideas. Now in Ghana iron is gotten from three major regions. We get iron from the north, Oti region and also the Volta region. That doesn't mean we don't get iron from other regions but these are the three major regions. So this is iron in its raw state, the iron ore and also this is a furnace. It's an oven. What they do is that they put the iron into the furnace for it to become very hot and then they beat it into any shape. So this is a hole. This is also a different type of hole but then you see that it has different shapes. And that is a sickle. It's used to harvest rice and cocoa. So during this era, they were harvesting a lot of farm produce. Right. Our 
all dresses. And in the olden days, this is what our warriors were wearing before going for war. We believe that they have charms and talisman. Before a warrior wears them, there's these rituals they perform. They'll perform the rituals and then hang it on a tree. When they shoot at it and the bullet gets through, it means that it's not ready. They have to redo it. They'll do it again, hang it back, and then shoot at it. If the bullet doesn't get through, it means that it's not ready for our warriors to try them or wear them. Yes. So that's how they were going about it. So we can actually call it spiritual bulletproof. These particular ones were excavated by archaeologists. So these ones are original. Right. The chief tansy in Ghana is divided into two. We have the southern kings and also the northern kings. When we talk about the southern kings, it consists of the Ashantis, the Akans, the Fantis, the Evers, and all other tribes except the northness. So the king has his crown, which is covered with the Dinkra symbols, and he also has his ornament, which is made of pure gold, which means that our land is rich in gold. He also has his beautiful kente cloth on, and we know that in Ghana, when it's time for a festival, and you notice that you are wearing the same design of kente as the king, you need to go home and change. Yes. And the name of his slippers is called ahenema. And every king rests his feet on an animal skin. And the particular animal skin determines the temperament or the hierarchy of the king. So if it's a lion skin or a leopard skin, you immediately know that the king is brave. And you should also know how to relate with him because he has that temper. And they practice in stool men, so they sit on a stool or a throne. So that's it about our southern kings. This is how they dress in public. We move on to our queen. When it comes to the Ashantis and their Kans, they practice matrilineal system of inheritance. So over there, the queen is not the wife of the king. She's the mother, the sister, or the auntie of the king. But when it comes to other tribes, it's different. So she also has a crown, her beads, and other ornaments. And she's wearing her beautiful kinte. And the name of this design is called Fatia Fatankroma. And she's also sitting on a ceremonial stool. In Ghana, we have three types of stools. We have the ceremonial stool, the fetish stool, and then the domestic stool as well. When it comes to the issues concerning the women in the community, the queen is always in charge when it comes to that. It's very hot in the north. They always have their towel here to wipe their sweat whenever they are sweating. And they also dress this way, even though it's hot, they also need to cover up. So they have people who fan them so they don't really feel the heat. And whenever or however the king wears his hat has a meaning. So if it's straight this way, it means that he's seeking for divine wisdom from Allah to rule his people. If it's slanted to the front, it means that in terms of hierarchy, there's nobody before him or he is in charge. When it's slanted backwards, it means that let's forget about the past and then live in the present. And these are kola nuts. Whenever you visit the palace in the northern region, they offer it to you as a sign of peace. It's very bitter, but then you still need to chew it. And that's the chief linguist always singing appellations to the king. All right. a typical kitchen setup in the olden days and currently most people still have them at the back of their homes so this is a kitchen rack they used to keep bush meat on top of it so that whenever they put this fire on the heat preserves the meat or prevents it from going bad same applies here they used to keep their vegetables in here and also the corn so that those tiny insects wouldn't get to it and they use this one to pound fufu palm nuts or palm fruit and also granite as well and from the stone age that they were grinding on stones, they came to the earthenware port era, or the Iowa. That's over here. And also, this is a cooler. It makes your water very, very cold as if you've taken it out of the fridge. Yes. And this was their source of light also. So that's it about our kitchen.